Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce this morning our keynote speaker for the fourth Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, the Senator, the Honourable Michaelia Cash, who is our Assistant Minister for Immigration and Border Protection. She is the Minister assisting the Prime Minister for Women and she is the Senator for Western Australia. Senator Cash, thank you. Vice Admiral Griggs, Chief of Navy and incoming Chair of the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium. Admiral Pillay, representing the Chief of Navy of South Africa. Chiefs of Navy, Heads of Coast Guards and Marine Police from around the Indian Ocean. Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Perth, Australia's gateway to the Indian Ocean. As a Western Australian Senator, I would like to welcome you here today on behalf of the Australian Government. And of course, on behalf of the Minister for Defence, David Johnston. I, um, I'm lucky enough to be here today because David unfortunately has pressing parliamentary business in Canberra. He did want to be here and I can assure you, I have spoken to him this morning and he sends his very, very best wishes to each and every one of you for a successful symposium. Ladies and gentlemen, as a proud Western Australian, I can think of no better place for Australia to begin its chairmanship of the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium. The founder of Modern Perth was a naval officer, Captain James Stirling, and he was married to a daughter of one of the directors of the British East India Company. So the nexus between navies, maritime forces, and global maritime trade has always been at the heart of this city. Here in Western Australia, we have been fortunate enough to have a great demand for the minerals and resources that we produce. There have been huge efforts to develop these resources, from the oil and gas in our northwest shelf, to the iron ore of the Pilbara, to the wheat fields that surround Perth. Most of the production in Western Australia is exported to the world via the Indian Ocean. And I know that this pattern is reflected elsewhere with manganese, coal and wheat from South Africa, iron ore and chemicals from India and petroleum products from the Middle East. It should therefore come as no surprise to this audience for me to suggest that the Indian Ocean region is an area of growing strategic and economic importance to Australia, to the region and to the world. Today I'd like to specifically focus on the importance of trade and the sea lanes of communication that, it, that are the arteries of the global economy within the context of the Indian Ocean region. Behind me, I believe, is a slide. Behind me there will shortly be a slide. <laughs> prepared by the Department of Defence. Come on, Department of Defence. Um, and if there's not, I'll tell you what it is. It, um, it was meant to show many aspects of the region, but one of the most immediately obvious is the range of sea lanes which crisscross the ocean. Um, the slide would have been an excellent reminder of our maritime region and how the maritime trading system links our region with the rest of the world. We're almost there, I hope. Um, one of the things which stands out most strongly in the slide, which we can't see at the moment, um, is the so-called Iron Highway, linking the Bab el Mandeb, the Straits of Hormuz, and the Straits of Malacca. Roughly three quarters of the world's oil and about half of all containerised trade uses the Iron Highway, along with some of the most significant iron ore and national natural gas trades. These trade flows are vital to the national economies of all the countries represented here, as well as to our major trading partners, China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, the United States, to name but four. But the Iron Highway is not just an express route from Europe and the Middle East to North Asia, Asia and the Americas. Demand within the Indian Ocean, states themselves, is also a major factor of the Iron Highway. The Iron Highway has, for want of a better term, 
many on-ramps. As just one example, India's projected economic growth over coming decades alone will change the Indo-Pacific region's energy and trade balance and reinforce the Indian Ocean region's position as a destination in its own right, as well as a transit point for regional trade flows. The ability to trade is important to all the nations of the Indian Ocean. The importance of these trade flows cannot be underestimated, nor can the shared interests of all Indo-Pacific states in ensuring that these flows are secure, delivering economic benefits for all. As we know, the costs of a breakdown of security could and would reverberate across the Indo-Pacific region. That says to me that arrangements such as this Indian Ocean Naval Symposium are key to the region's future. We've got very, very important work to do here and that cannot be underestimated. If the trends we have observed over the last decade continue, and we have every reason to believe that they will, then it seems to me that the ability within and from the Indian Ocean to access the global maritime trading system has become one of the most important security challenges for all nations in the Indian Ocean region. Any disruption to the global maritime trading system is thus a matter of critical importance to the governments across this region. The role that the navies, coast guards, marine police around our region perform in securing our access to and the ongoing security of the global maritime trading system is thus fundamental to each nation's security. This is of course where all of you, chiefs of navy, heads of coast guards and maritime police and your organisations have such an important role to play. Quite simply, you are the people who can and do preserve the good order at sea. Without good order at sea, the ability to trade is compromised. It becomes less reliable and more expensive. If that happens, the economic potential and the long-term stability and security for all of our nations is diminished. Today and into the future, our regions face many, many challenges. The most broadly publicised, of course, is that of piracy. But there are many other challenges, including arms trafficking, proliferation, terrorism, extremism, fisheries exploitation, environmental challenges, and many others. I am pleased to note that much good work has been done collectively to address many of these challenges. The work of the combined maritime forces, the multinational naval partnership, is one great example of the work being done in the Indian Ocean. Covering the Arabian Gulf, the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, the Gulf of Oman, and parts of the Indian Ocean, the combined maritime forces have delivered great success in their efforts to defeat terrorism, prevent piracy, encourage regional cooperation, and promote a safe maritime environment. Australia currently has the guided missile frigate HMAS Darwin deployed to the region, our 57th individual ship deployment to the Middle East since 1990. Australia and Pakistan have the honour to be the current commanders of Combined Task Force 150 and 151 respectively. And I know that there are many nations represented here today which also contribute to the work of the Combined Maritime Forces. France, Malaysia, Pakistan, the Seychelles, Thailand, the United Kingdom, the United States, Yemen, and many, many more here that do similar work through either the EU or NATO constructs or contribute independently. Turning to another exemplar of the security challenges that this region faces, it may surprise you all to note that the Indian Ocean alone is home to about 45% of the world's fishes. So when we are looking at regional fisheries, even without 
considering deep water fishing, we are looking at an issue of fundamental importance to hundreds of millions of people. While much of this obviously occurs within national waters and exclusive economic zones, fish are not confined by lines drawn on charts and maritime borders are porous. So the food security issue is underpinned by the cooperative enterprise of good order at sea. But as we all know, good order at sea does not happen by itself. It takes concerted, consistent and cooperative efforts to ensure that the freedom of the seas for those who go about their lawful business and to suppress and disrupt those who could use the sea for purposes which are against our common interest. I do not underestimate the time and the effort that goes into achieving this, but likewise, I do not underestimate the importance of ensuring that we do achieve it. It will be important for the future security and prosperity of the nations that each one of us here today represent, that we be honest about the state of our regional security architecture. Whilst there have been some significant developments in recent years, not least of all the maturation of this Indian Ocean Naval Symposium and the evolution of the parallel Indian Ocean Rim Association, the security architecture of the Indian Ocean region is not as mature as that of other regions and we need to work on this. I think there is a need to better develop the security architecture and in this context, each and every one of you in this room has an important role to play. There are three key areas that Minister Johnston and I would urge you to look at during your deliberations over the next few days and going forward. These are your business practices, the structured manner in which you as a group look at addressing regional challenges, and thirdly, how we can work together collaboratively to build regional security capacity through practical action. I truly believe that through these efforts in these areas, we can best advance the security architecture of our region. Through forums such as this, I think we could see the region seas are not something to keep us apart. They are a place where we find new needs and new areas of cooperation. I do not expect that that will be easy, but I do think the effort is worthwhile and I strongly believe it will be in each of our nation's best interests for us all to make the effort. The habits of cooperation that are developed from working together are habits that can have positive benefits far beyond their immediate aims. Through our region, though our region has been and will likely always be a diverse one. I think our mutual interests in good order at sea and our mutual interests in protecting our collective ability to trade are powerful forces which bring us together. Your presence here today in Perth, your continued support of the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium is to me a positive sign and I thank each and every one of you for that commitment. It is an honour and a great responsibility for the Royal Australian Navy to be chair of the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, a responsibility I know that is taken extremely seriously. Once again, on behalf of the Australian Government, but in particular on behalf of the Minister for Defence, David Johnston, I have great personal pleasure as a Senator for Western Australia in welcoming each and every one of you to Perth and to Western Australia. I really do hope that each of you enjoy your stay here in our state's capital and I wish you all the very best over the coming days as you deliberate in your symposium. Thank you. <laughs>